Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Barnes Takeout. My name is Amy Gillette. I'm a collections researcher here at the Foundation. And today I'm going to go with you into room 18 to look at what I believe is one of the most beautiful paintings in the entire collection um, displayed right up here. So let's go on in and take a closer look. So the title of this picture is Two Women by the Shore Mediterranean. Um, painted in the year 1896 um, by Henri Edmund Cross, whose signature you can actually see right down here, the year 96. Now, Cross was um, a, a French painter who had gotten his career going in Paris um, in the 1880s, but um, actually moved down to the Mediterranean coast um, in the south of France in Provence in the year 1891. And this um, painting even has a sticker on its back that gives the other title, alternative title, Coast of Provence. And so I believe that's what we're seeing here. Um, let's take a look down here. Um, we've got the two women, um, this one gazing out toward the sea, this one sitting on this wonderful purple rock, um, thinking, it seems. Um, we've got these low shrubby green bushes, some fabulous orange trees over here. Um, out in the water, we've got this sailboat gliding across the, the water um, with its edge, I think, catching the sun just sort of picked out in gold there. Um, and across the water, actually, I'd really like to think for a sec um, about this, this shape up here, which seems um, to be a trail of, of smoke from a passing ship. And so in this painting, um, that smoke, along with the dress of the two women, um, tell us that we're in the late 19th century, and this isn't um, this isn't some vision of um, the idealized past, for example. And on top of um, of being present focused, it's actually a painting that's very future oriented. Um, and I'm going to read to you um, something that Cross wrote. He said. I want to paint happiness, happy beings who will have become humankind in several centuries. Um, and so to be honest, when I first saw this picture, um, I thought it was beautiful in perhaps an ornamental way and was very surprised to find such a rich quote from the artist. And so I'd like to think a little about a little bit about what he means um, about painting a happy future of, um, of self-willed humanity. And um, much of that was the technique that he used. Um, he, um, along with some other artists that you might find at the collection are known as um, neo-impressionists. It was a, um, a term coined by the, um, the famous and um, very influential critic and reporter Felix Fenion. And what that meant was they took um, some of the techniques developed by the Impressionists a little bit earlier, like um, showing the brushwork, very gestural open air painting and, um, and rationalized it. And so what exactly does that mean? Let's take a, a closer look. Um, he's applied all of these discrete spots of color um, in ways that create um, very harmonious um, color color cording relationships between color. And so, um, for instance, if we look at um, the um, how we often sets up yellow and purple together, those are complementary colors. And so when you put them together, um, they they both kind of pop. Um, and orange and blue, if we kind of look over here at their pairing, do the same thing. Um, each is brighter by its relation with the other. Um, you can see as well over here on the sailboat, this wonderful pairing of, um, of the kind of golden yellow and the purple up here. Um, and so, you know, all together we've got the um, harmonious whole on the one hand, but made up of um, each of these discrete parts. And I'll read you another quote from Cross who wrote, I think very lyrically, when one has conceived of, of the ensemble, study separately each fragment in order finally to foresee how each detail is itself a pretty thing. Um, so if this painting technique um, actually quite purposefully um, <laughs> dovetailed um, molecular theory, 
um, the belief that um, a lot like the quote that I just read you from um, from Henri Edmund Cross, um, that there's the ensemble and then each autonomous fragment, um, molecular th theory held that um, an atom itself is autonomous, but like the different um, dots, fragments, details um, within this um, kind of coalesce into um, an organic, coherent, um, cohesive whole. And um, on top of that, I think um, I think I might have mentioned that the overall effect um, of all, all of these dots um, that Cross has provided us that um, that create these color chords that stir up joy, that kind of echo current theories of, um, of the fabric of nature, um, also in some ways did look back to um, techniques of, um, of ancient and medieval artwork, such as mosaic making, um, holding up the idea in this, um, Cross was living in a very um, industrialized society um, with um, huge gaps um, between the rich and the poor, um, looked back to craft work, um, artwork, architecture of the past because um, they people really believed that um, when people had been working in, together in guilds, for instance, back um, in, say, the Middle Ages, each craftsman had his own creative freedom um, and self-agency. And so um, now I'm going to give a quote from um, one of the social theorists to whom um, Cross and the other new impressionists really looked to guidance when forming their own kind of social political theories. Um, and he was writing about um, how, let me see, he wrote, in the marvelous time of ancient Greece, um, another um, Mediterranean place that people thought was an awful lot like French Provence, and in the age of the cathedrals, sculpture, painting, music, and dance, works of the individual artist, were born by free generation and not less by collective labor, such as architecture or the construction of a city. In this manner, one saw surge the temples of, um, of cities and the churches of the Middle Ages, whole populations animated by the same spirit, swept along by the same desire, collaborated on a common work, which would be at the same time the glory of all and the particular joy of each one of the citizens. And so we see this um, Mediterranean idol, one of the paradigms that Cross has provided us. And I'm gonna go back to the ensemble to look one more time at its display in room 18 by these cathedral cityscapes um, that his friend Paul Signac painted of um, Geneva over here on the right-hand side and of Rouen um, over here on the other. And so he's given us the cathedral and a city paradigm go. And so what we've got is a painting full of joy and um, and hope for hum humanity, um, rendered where the whole, as well as every detail, um, is beautiful. So thank you so much for listening. Um, that's a wrap for today's Barnes Takeout. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and um, we'd love it if you'd leave comments. Thank you so much and be well. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.